Online AI is pretty good, but because we're still in such an early stage in AI, a lot of the tools that you and I want to use don't exist yet. So this video is going to teach you how to create your own AI tools so that you can use AI wherever you like. So yesterday I almost bought a crash damage 2005 R1. However, after I did the maths, I figured out it was stupid. However, it did actually give me a pretty good idea for a bot. Instead of going on the forums every single time and trying to find my issue, or consult the 457 pages of the service manual, you can basically speak to them as PDFs without needing to go and look for it. And it's really easy to do it as well. Right, so I'm going to go through this really quick, so if you want to, you can slow down the video. So first you create two new nodes, drag a raw input card into both, enable manual knowledge answering, type a little welcome message into the first card, and put that piece into the second. And this is how you connect them. You go start to standard one, standard one to standard two, and standard two back to standard two. And that's all it is. And now for your knowledge base, just go to the default knowledge base. Uh, for me, I'm gonna use a document, and then we're just gonna drag my document in, which is the 2004 service manual. And then if I wanted to search the forums as well, I just go to search the web, and then put in the domain of the forums. However, this takes a while and it takes up my vector database storage, so I'm not gonna do that now, but you could if you like. So in my example, actually the 2005 R1, the rod went through the block and I talked to some mechanics They all said, don't bother fixing it, just buy a new motor. So the process would just be remove the old motor and put the new motor in. However, I've never done this and I could do something wrong. So let's ask the bot, the service manual, what I should do. And here it gives me all the steps I need to follow to loosen all the mounts that keeps the motor to the frame. As an example, I'm also going to ask it how I would remove the clutch. And here it gives me all the steps that I need to do to remove the clutch. Now this is how you would remove the clutch. However, the 2005 R1 uses a wet clutch system, so the friction plates would need to be lubricated again to put it in. So I'm going to ask the bot if it knows what oil I should use to lubricate the friction plates. It says that engine oil should be used, and it's actually right. I did research this, however, I don't know what oil. The specific type of engine oil that you should use to lubricate the friction plates is Yamalube 4 2040 uh, or SAE 2040, which is actually right. Now it's good that it knows that. So I'm going to ask it a few questions about coolant. It is a high quality ethylene glycol antifreeze containing corrosion inhibitors for aluminum engines should be used as a recommended coolant. But how much do I use? And the engine takes a total amount of 2.51 liters of coolant. Now, just like one of my other videos, people in the comments are going to go, wow, I could have just looked this up. Let's see what would have happened if you did look this up. So how much coolant does the 2005 R1 uses? Say so just under three QTS, no idea what that means. And here, the second result says at least 3.5 liters, which is wrong because that's a liter too much. That's the thing about just looking something up. You never know who says it, you don't know who they are, and you don't know if they're right or not. However, when you use the service manual like this, this is exactly what Yamaha says. However, as you can see, understanding a service module is a lot of work. It takes a lot of understanding that pretty much is only meant for a mechanic. However, we can just give this to AI and then it understands it. And instead of having to look it up and then given the wrong information and then making a mistake that could cost you a lot of money, you can just use the service manual in a much easier way, which literally guarantees that you do it right. Now for this next part, this is actually something that I've been using for a very long time. And it did gain popularity like briefly for a month, but then it just kind of faded into obscurity again. But it's actually really powerful. There are certain like self-improvement YouTubers that I love to watch, Hamza Ahmed, First Man, Andrew Huberman, and the rest. And I find this to work really well with Andrew Huberman. Basically all that you do, you take some of his YouTube videos, one, two, however many, you transcript them and then you put them into the bot. And then basically you have a free healthcare guru literally in your back pocket. Instead of literally having to watch that entire like two and a half hour video sometimes, you can literally speak to a bot and then can just give you a summary. Now I know there are like summary tools for his podcasts out there, but it doesn't get as good as this. Now here is just a random Andrew Huberman podcast. You copy the link, you go to youtubetranscript.com, you put the URL in, you say go, and it gives you the full URL of everything that was said in the video. Then we're gonna click on copy entire transcript. We're gonna go back into a bot. Now we're gonna say a rich text source. Then you just control V. And there we go. That is an entire Andrew Huberman podcast in text form. So let's give it a shot. We will refresh our conversation. And now let's find something to ask the bot. All right, so I'm just going to go to one of these chapters. It's called phone-based childhood and brain development. So I'm just going to copy that and ask the bot what it thinks. And here it gives me a very nice summary of what was said in this podcast about phone-based childhood and brain development critical periods. 
Now, obviously, this is only using one podcast to give me answers. However, if you get like 10 podcasts in here about something that you're interested in, maybe it's like health, then literally, instead of having to watch 10 hours of footage, you can just ask for a summary and basically ask it questions based on what was said on the podcast. So what I'm going to be sharing next is something that I'm pretty sure is going to help a lot of you guys watching my channel. I know most of my audience is pretty much bot builders. I'm kind of hoping this video does bad so that not a lot of people see it. What I did at the start, because I struggled so much with BotPress, because I don't have a coding background, I don't have an AI background, I have no background whatsoever, is basically I made a BotPress bot to help me with BotPress. And this is how I did it. All right, so first thing I did, I went to BotPress Docs, Cloud Studio, because that's all you use, and I copied that URL. And we're going to go back into our bot. We're going to go to our default knowledge base. We're going to delete the Andrew Huberman knowledge base. We're going to add a website. And then we're just going to paste that URL. Discover pages. Now I'm only going to select the ones that are actually relevant to us. Which would be the docs one and only the cloud one. And I'm also going to do the API documentation. And we're just going to say add pages. Now while we wait for that, I'm going to show you my second trick. We're going to go to YouTube. And we're going to go into the BotPress channel. Now this is a literal gold mine if you're ever stuck. This nice guy right here literally does updates and showcases of new features. So if you're ever stuck, this is a very good place to be. But this guy is awesome. He does like hour long tutorials, 45, two hours, it doesn't matter. This guy is amazing. Every single time a new feature drops, this guy makes a video. And it's pretty awesome. So what we're going to do, we're going to go into one of these. Let's say this video about schemas. We're going to copy the URL and we are going to do the exact same thing that we did with Andrew Huberman. Now you can probably see where I'm going with this. There's literally nothing that you will not be able to do in BotPress if you just use this. And I know that because I did it. Unfortunately, I did lose the bot that I did use back in the day because I stopped using it entirely and it just started taking up space in my dashboard. However, this is pretty much exactly how I did it. A new rich text document and you just paste that. And there we go. Now you have a bot that can literally teach you BotPress and help you when you're stuck. So for an example, using that video that we just imported, I'm just going to ask it, how do I use schemas? And here it tells me exactly that. This is useful when you want to ensure the data you're working with is in the correct format. Here's an example of creating a scheme for a user object, probably like name, age, email, and address. And that is exactly it. I'm not sure if I showcased the video where I use schemas. I think I think I did. Yeah, if I did, I'll put a card to it up above. This is extremely useful. And the reason why is because ChatGPT and literally nobody on the internet has ever made tutorials for BotPress and stuff like this, except BotPress themselves on the YouTube channel. But the YouTube channel isn't very big. Like the power that you wield with this bot is, is pretty next level. So thank you very much for watching today's video. I hope you found some value in it and I hope you can use it in your own use cases. If you don't really feel like doing all that yourself, I do offer services where I do it for you, obviously for a fee. So if you're interested in that, you can just shoot me an email. Anyway, that's it. Cheers. I'll see you next week.